Today I'm off to watch the world's poshest football club. Posh is defined by a person, group or thing belonging to or behaving as if they are belonging to the upper classes. Not me. People calling me posh because I have a Norfolk accent drives me mad. Anyway, posh isn't something that necessarily crosses over with football stereotypically. The sport is known for its accessibility to everyone, whereas the more generically posh fans would see themselves at another sport like rugby. Or rugby, or even rugby. Rugby. Rugby is posh. Th that's the point. However, there is a few clubs seen as posh in the UK specifically. Peterborough literally nicknamed the posh. However, two clubs stand out more than others. Chelsea and Fulham. I lean more towards Fulham being the stereotypical posh club, the cheese boards on a train, the neutral stand, etc, etc. I also have a very posh friend joining me for today's game too, in Mr. Max Fosh. Is this all a myth, however? What is a match there at Craven Cottage really like? Let's get off to Fulham and bring on the poshness. Or the foshness. No, that's poshness. Hello, I'm in London. It is a evening. I'm about to meet Max. Well, it's about an hour and a half to meet Max. I'm here early. I think we should have a quick little dive into why people consider Fulham the poshest football club and whether that's fair. I mean, firstly, it isn't a part of London that is very posh in itself. One of the more wealthy parts of London, as you can see on the screen, it's very, it's, it's a nice area. But I did a tweet asking for people's examples as to why they consider Fulham posh and whether the stereotype is true or not true. Also, whether you consider this club posh or not, it is, without a shadow of a doubt, in one of the nicest looking parts of London. Like this is, this is the walk. You go on this walk, you can take this walk to the ground and the ground is on the river. And you could argue it's like the UK's most beautiful football ground. It is, it is a beautiful place. It is also absolutely worth noting that a lot of Fulham fans completely detest the posh accusations, but you know, there are, they do, as you can, they do on screen, as you can see, sell their own cheese board. So, what does that mean? There's also a trend that goes around with a selection of Fulham fans, which is amazing, where they take wine, cheese, and grapes, and like cheese and crackers, and like mixed meat, what is it called? Charcuterie, are uh, on the train to away games, which is so anti what football fans do. But I also love it, which is, is not, me. I'm from Great Yarmouth. I just talk Southern. And they also used to have a neutral stand for a while, which people were like, why? I don't know if they still have it, but people were like, why are you doing that? Come on. As far as walks go towards football grounds, pretty decent this one, isn't it? A Fulham fan also presented my favourite football image of all time. Alfie, overlay it. It is the man who bought a victorious sponge to a football game and a knife and started cucking him <laughs> cucking? That's what I do. Um started cutting himself up cake at half time. And I just think that is that is the perfect definition for the stereotype of Fulham fans. And what we're gonna do today is get into Craven Cottage and see whether that stereotype rings true or if it's just as I suspect a normal fan base of a few posh people because it's in a rich area. Most fan bases are posh people, I think. There's this quite iconic rant from a Fulham fan, which, once again, sort of plays into the stereotype. To the f***ing imbecile for a pie which went on my new white home shirt and spat over about seven people, you are a dickhead. Excuse my French. Sorry about the language. Once again, apologise for language twice. But people really need to look at their behaviour during games. I am the first to get emotional, but no need to throw a f***ing pie. Brand new shirt ruined and two points lost. Not sure the pie correlates to the two points lost. And always jumping up and down on seats is not needed. But it kind of is. This is not the Fulhamish way to behave. You want to go and do that shit, go and support the shit down the road. Is a new term the Fulhamish way to behave? I want to find out what the actual Fulhamish way to behave is today. We've arrived at Craven Cottage. I've got about 45 minutes to spare. I just think it's, a, it's such a good ground. Especially for the place it is. But to have a ground that's got like this much like greenery and stuff around it, in London of all places, on a river, just feels like such an anomaly. So I bought both myself and Max hospitality tickets for this. The hospitality it's taking me to is like a mile up the road, which is interesting because if you think it really was posh, they'd send the riffraff a mile up the road or not even let them in. I won't be allowed in. Look at me. Is that a wild Max Fosh in the distance walking towards me? I believe it is. AirPods in. Business. Strictly business. Hey, <laughs> da, 
da, da, da. Monday Night Raw, baby. We just love poshness. I know, welcome. Welcome to Daddy's home. <laughs> Let me show you around. We're, in, we're unfortunately we're not in the bar of Ken the Royal Bar of Kensington and Chelsea, but we're just in Hammersmith and Fulham, which is a great shame. But we're at the Crabtree, it's a pub. There's hospitality in here. <laughs> there is hospitality. Or Fosh Vitality. Fosh Vitality. Brought my helmet. You never know when a scrap's gonna fight out. <laughs> uh, break out. Cheers. Cheers. Very, very much. Yeah, yeah. This, pub, this pub is very the holiday. Yeah. <laughs> it's giving Jude Law and Cameron Diaz, but I'm not complaining. We've also got the menu. A lot of these words on this menu are quite alien to me. Right. But I imagine they're quite normal for you. So there's uh, parsley, that's a vegetable. <laughs> You've got the classics uh, pressed duck and pistachio terrine. Um, What's a terrine? Team in Italy near Juventus. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. don't know what the is. So is this is this posh etiquette? Yeah. What you're doing right now? Yeah, this is. Hey, I, I actually have got cashmere. <laughs> <laughs> cashmere with a shacket. Got my fish and chips coming. I want to make sure that I don't get anything on it. Fish and chips doesn't feel inherently posh. Fish and chips actually feels like the Great Yarmouth meal, which I grew up with. But the tartar sauce has got parsley. In it. Do you know people on my channel call me posh? because I've got a southern accent. Guys, <laughs> we're in the big leagues now. <laughs> See, what annoys me actually about what you've got there is when Americans come to England. <laughs> no, that, that should be up at the posh. When Americans come to England and think fish and chips is that, because they're not chip shop chips. And it really irritates me that they're not chip shop chips. They're oven chips, and there is a discernible difference. That's McCann's. They are McCann's. By the way, a lemon meringue cheesecake yeah. sounds like the most attractive thing in my life for the past year. That is an unbelievable prospect. Sticky toffee pudding. Yeah, I mean, lemon brown cheesecake. I'm pretty sure I went to school with lemon brown cheesecake. It's kind of a posh person. Name. What is the poshest name you've ever encountered? I don't know whether he watches away days or not. This is, a, this is an actual person. I went to a school with a guy called Humphrey Brighton Holmes Stanton Knife. <laughs> That's a, that's a quadruple barrel name, which is <laughs> quadruple. A quad, a quad baby. If you had a double barrel name in my school, you were the richest person there. So you've gone quad. Yeah, I've, I've, I've met a quad. I've met quad before. He was a lovely guy, actually, Humphrey. Harrow. Yeah. Much different to Fleck High School of Norfolk? Um, very different, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Harrow on the Hill. Uh, the FA Cup was invented by uh, Harrovians. Um, the first FA Cup was won by the Harrow Wanderers, which is the old boys of Harrow. We've got some fun silverware. And yeah, we've got our own version of football as well, called Harrow Football. And the, the ball is much bigger. It's played on a farm, so it's really muddy. It's like a mixture of rugby, football and sumo wrestling. I hate every bit of that yeah. you've just said that. Right, it's right. <laughs> Flake High School, we once got an Ofsted good rating. So there's that. <laughs> right, should we go? We've got half an hour. Yeah. Who's that? Oh. It's Bobby Reed. Is, it, is that Bobby Deckard over Reed? Deckard Dover. Of course you pronounce the middle name of it. Of course. Every name is important. Yeah. We got a drink voucher. Yeah, I've got, I've got my drink voucher. I'm gonna keep my drink, but it's gonna be for a softie. What's the suffragette movement? <laughs> Thoughts, opinions on the suffragette movement. <laughs> Emmeline Pankhurst would have made a terrific centre back. Do we follow these guys? Yeah, I think they, they, know, football, they know. They know. They seem to know what they're doing. Look at this. All the ultras offer a fight. Offer a scrap. Look at that orderly line. In terms of obviously, you're a Chelsea fan, Max. Yeah. Oh, um, the the debate is always who is posh at Chelsea or Fulham. Is that the debate? <laughs> um, on Twitter it was. You've got Made in Chelsea. Yeah. The hotel room in the stadium fad. Yeah. I just feel like Fulham are more known for the whole. Oh no, Fulham are absolutely posher uh, yeah. because there's the underbelly of Chelsea of racism. <laughs> yeah, there's more hooliganism. There's, of... there's much more hooliganism, whereas Fulham is just a is just seemingly a kinder kinder community of football lovers. And and I know in the football district, of course, that's like seen as a bad thing. Because it's all, absolutely not at all. Yeah. Be like, yeah, you can them. But actually, <laughs> look, we're walking to the stadium now. There's no. Look at the view there. as well. Beautiful. You're walking along the river. There's no f the toffees. There's, there's none of that. Everyone's in their in their lovely Canada juice jackets. Yeah. And they're off to have an enjoy. The middle class like football too. In the Premier League, Fulham Football Ground. It's on the Thames. It's beautiful. It's got the history. It's the poshest club for me. And you also can do a summer picnic on the ground. You can. can you? Yeah. What? Oh, can we go? <laughs> we might miss kick off, which actually filling me with a bit of anxiety because Max's bag has now got to be yeah, put in. I got told off. 
Yeah, Max has been told off. Come from work. Yeah, he said he said go go to the school. Which uh, yeah, bit sus. I was gonna say I'm not allowed to have been walking distance. For the first time in my life at a football match, someone has just walked past talking about the cricket. And I don't want to say it plays into the stereotype. England! Hey, England! Hey, I mean, what, what a what a result against India, by the way. Yeah, On turning pitches in the subcontinent, Tom Hartley, seven for... Yes, please. <laughs> what, are you want a battle? No, he's watching football with some booze and some birds, yeah? <laughs> that tennis doesn't belong to me. No, talking about leg spin and silly mid-off. Look at it, though. A beautiful stadium. Right in, like, you know, the mixture of, like, terraced houses. When they, when they talk about the terraces, they don't mean terraced houses yeah. in Fulham. Firstly, welcome to Craven Cottage. It's Second, started. I know the game stop. That's my fault, I know. Sorry, <laughs> but I just want to quickly talk about the view. Don't drop the camera. Look at that. Oh. Think, think on the walls. Yeah, I mean, you can't... Like a gender reveal party. <laughs> you can't batter off the, um, the posh allegations and also have salmon on your walls. Fuchsia pink that. <laughs> sure. Row 11. Oh, we're, mate, we're in R5, you dingus. Are we in the wrong place? So, R05, not... So you, I've, just, I've never been called a dingus before. <laughs> One three two and one three one. Oh, like Daichi just there. Daichi. These are unbelievable seats. This is what you get. You get this close to Sean Deitch. I can almost see what kind of MS tie he's got. I feel like Sean Dice is the antichrist for Fulham. Also, just, just no, not for me, Clive. It's, 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 it's recyclable. Recyclable, yes. There is literally a cottage in the stadium. It's just a really, you know what I think of Fulham? It's just a lovely club. Crafters are in use. Come on, the Fs. The Fs. Yes. I just love the existence He's of Sean Dyke. Look at him. Oh, oh, him. It's a mini Dyche. There is something that really irritates me about the noise of a clapper compared to a clap. But a clap's like, oh, a clapper. <laughs> See that? Sounds like Donald Duck's being choked. Just quickly, Max. Just yeah. what are your thoughts on the atmosphere here it's then? Good atmosphere. Uh, it's nice and warm. It's like a thermos in here. It's just like very nice and cozy. Cozy experience. Yeah, cozy experience. Which I think is how Fulham would want to market themselves. Yeah. Oh, it's about to be a goal. That end behind the goal that Fulham have is. Looks like there could be some amazing limbs. Of Actually, Alfie, just to show that. So anyone who has a stereotype of Fulham fans that make good atmosphere, insert some limbs from that end. Half time, very pointless first half, really. Half time, a um, few good chances, but no, no one's broken the deadlock. As someone who's posh, I'm obviously aware of this all about Fulham. Does it annoy you when there's this perception of how a posh person would enjoy football? No, people are, it's none of my business. It's none of my business how someone thinks of how I would enjoy football. And do you know what, I'm, I'm slightly of the, uh, I'm, I probably wouldn't enjoy football the same way that probably a lot of people do. I don't really like shouting and swearing. I don't like the, people would say I'd be sh I'd be sh than having a grand and they'd probably be right. Well, so as a full and match day experience, I would say, it's just quite a warm club to go to. It's I've very, not, yeah, I've not cool. felt intimidated at any point. Right. The atmosphere I've heard better, but I've heard worse. And also, just what a view! Like, yeah. I, there's, I, there's a guy, there's a guy strumming away on an acoustic guitar behind me. He's he's just trying to follow his dreams, and that's what Fulham does. There is so much gatekeeping in football. So much, absolutely. Trust me, I, I know. There is so much. Everyone wants to be the best fan. Everyone wants to be the most loyal fan. Everyone feels football needs to be enjoyed a certain way. Spoiler alert: it doesn't. Like I'm enjoying myself and I know people might hate me for that going oh well it's oh, oh, shoot me it's not really tribal in any way this experience there's no I don't feel like I mean as a Chelsea fan again this probably is more of a reflection on me as a Chelsea fan I'm enjoying my day out at Craven Cottage the fans around us and bear in mind we're in a hospitality section so once again please bear that in mind no one really feels that into it around us to me no one really feels like they're going this is make or break which once again a healthier way to enjoy football the man next to me has got so many problems sandwiches in his jacket pocket it's unbelievable oh, there's a the smoke machine behind you god the club's on fire Banned disposable vapes it's, it's an absolute <laughs> epidemic will griggs in there <laughs> no i fire. can be your hero baby <laughs> please welcome rachel adam and Deji. <laughs> i think i think that might be the white and red wine that's a sauvignon blanc mate <laughs> two red wines please never had red wine at the football <laughs> red wine at the football there we go there's your red wine at the football <laughs> Is it Malbec? Red wine, are you down in a red wine? We're not allowed, we're starting again, Ellis. I've never tried, do you know I've only ever had red wine in my life once? Well, 
Argentina. This is going to disappoint you. I don't like that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, he's very cool. Oh, I don't like that at all. That's me. Dumb. I'm just going to leave that there. You stay there. How do people drink that instead of white? <laughs> Steady. It does sum up the outward perception of Fulham once again that the Everton fans have just char started chanting the Tories. Hey. I can get behind it. Five games in the Prem tonight. Five games in the Prem tonight. Loads of goals in all of them, except for this one. Yeah, we're taking no-no. We'll take a point and go home. <laughs> the guy next to me is laughing at an Everton attack. You don't laugh, you nearly cry. There's a difference. Just don't neck wine at half time is my, is my moral of the story. He sat here, he said this for the last 20 minutes of the game. He's absolutely been the lad. He's diced. He's actually got that work, he's absolutely sure diced. Look, once again, I'm going to make the point that this is a nothing game for Fulham, really, but it has been pretty. It's been, it's been pretty quiet throughout. And I know obviously we're in a weird location for a bang centre, but it does feel like you would expect. Like, by the way, right now, Fulham are in Everton's box. Just appeal for a penalty. You know what I mean? Look, it wasn't a penalty. It just doesn't, it's not really ever got oomph. I want some oomph, please. Oh, it's it. Bang it, Kearney. Oh! It was nearly the twin tossing out of a fire with a goal. But we share the same birthday for anyone curious. It's so, a lucky number. Yeah? Uh, born on September 24th. What? Yeah, when are you born? September 24th. <laughs> <laughs> To say he's done better with their life, it really is. I love Sean Deitch. Look at him, look at the movement there from Deitch. Needless hand movements, and he's also complained to the assistant about every decision. Sean is not going to make a difference to any decision made. Stop moaning, Sean. Stop moaning. There he is. Um, is it bad to try and get Tosson's attention during the game? <laughs> Completely break his focus to wave to me. Can we get a wave, do you reckon? Tosson had a revival, just there. Don't be that cringe, Ellis. Not on camera. If he hears you, he thinks he's a member of the crowd, like a fan. So he's not going to be like, oh gosh, yes, that's Alex. Alex? Alex? That's a Christ, even the person I'm with doesn't know my name. I've got no hope of the person over there. I just want to jump in and say there's going to be a goal in three. There's going to be a goal in three. <laughs> Two. What? Just, it is the 85th minute, no, no, people are leaving. I'm not happy about that. It's, it's, it's customary for posh people to disappoint the people around them, so uh, <laughs> well done for them. Dan Juma got injured and... Fulham fans are clapping off the injured Everton player. No comment on that one. <laughs> How have Everton not just won it? Down there. Is this Millwall? Is this the den? That's not a full image way to behave. And no, no, in fairness, Max, feels like the most sophisticated way for a game to end. Parity at the cottage. Parity, shake each other's hand, maybe a cup of tea at full time. Bloody good job. It was, it was a good game of football. It was a good game of football. Great season. Thank you very much to away days for helping out with that. But ultimately, it wasn't the greatest game of football. <laughs> Right, what was the experience at Fulham like? I had a good time, you know, I think their fans are maybe a bit annoyed, some of them, at the, the sentiment of them just being a posh fan base. Just because you're considered the posh as a football club doesn't mean your whole fan base is considered posh. It's just that your fan base may have more posh people than not. It's in a very wealthy area of London, um, so therefore you're gonna attract more wealth um, and more maybe eccentric ways of being. I had a really fun time though, Atmosphere could be a bit better. The stadium was incredible, but admittedly, I went to a flat game. It wasn't like a derby or something. But I would recommend going because I think it's one of the most beautiful stadiums in the whole of the UK. I had a really fun time. Halftime wine is interesting. But other than that, I've been Ellis. Make sure to like for more football videos and more football shirt videos as well. Ciao, ciao. Bye.